he's a good, good God. He's a good, good God. See, it ain't so much about singing on the in uh, on the mountain. Can I hear you singing in the valley? Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, and I, I don't mean singing woe is me. I mean singing victory is mine. <laughs> oh, I refuse to be defeated. Glory to our God. Amen. Not standing down, not taking down, not backing up. Amen. Hallelujah, because I'm a victor no matter where I find myself physically positioned, because spiritually, I'm seated in heavenly places in Christ. Amen. Well, we greet you this morning in the name of Jesus. We greet all our listening audience this morning. We're here at Lifeline Ministries at 300 South Avenue in Lancaster, South Carolina, where God lives. God rules and God reigns. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He's a good, good God. He's a good, good God. Amen. Hallelujah. Look up at your neighbor and say, good morning. morning. How are you? you? And wait for an answer. How are you? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Nobody like our God. Amen. Amen. We're a happy church, right? Amen. We're a joyful church. Amen. Church that loves God. A church that loves one another. Amen. Church that loves our community and loves our families. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, because the Spirit of Christ lives on the inside of us. Amen. And that makes us loving human beings. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to open your Bibles with me this morning to Romans, the 10th chapter and the 17th verse. <clears throat> Amen. I covenant with God to never get so familiar with any of his word that I cease to learn from it. The moment you think you have gotten everything you need out of any particular scripture, then it ceases to minister to you. You cease to get revelation from it. But regardless of how many times you've heard it, how many times it's been taught, the different ways, amen, there's always something more to receive, amen. And we thank and bless God for the Holy Spirit this morning. I decrease and he increase, none of me and all of him, amen. I believe God has a word. Every time we come together, God has a word for us. And it's a word to encourage, it's a word to challenge, it's a word to exalt, it's a word to build up. Amen? Because God is a what kind of God? And he cannot do what? Cannot lie. Amen. So everything he says about us is so. Amen. Well, I don't see it. Well, keep saying it and you will see it. Amen. We got the title of my message this morning is Hearing Believing and doing. Hearing, believing, and doing. Praise God. It's not enough just to hear the word. It's not enough just to hear the word. We have to believe what we've heard. And then we have to become a doer of what we heard. You can tell when you believe what you've heard because you'll start acting on what you've heard. Amen. Amen. Romans 10, verse 17. So then, faith cometh by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It is important what you hear, and it is important how you hear. Amen. The word of God said the word was preached unto them, but it did not profit them because they did not mix faith with it that heard it. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
We have to hear the word of God to know the mind of God and to be able to walk out that word. Amen. That's why God, in, in all of his wonderful knowledge, uh, created something called church. Where we could come together and re- hear the word, receive the word, amen, and become who he already know we are. Amen. See, we're becoming what we already are. God already sees the beginning from the end. Amen. And so the more you hear the word, the more you become who he knows you already are. Amen. That's why you can boldly declare and decree that you are victorious. Yeah. You can boldly decree and declare you're healed. Amen. Glory to God. Because God has already said it. And as you come and as you hear the word of God, then you are changed into the very image of Of the Lord God Almighty. Isn't that wonderful? So faith cometh by hearing. The Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. And how many want to be pleasing to God? I mean in all your ways. Not just some of your ways. All of your ways. I want all of my life to be a reflection of God living on the inside of me. Amen. Hallelujah. Not just Sunday morning. That's religion. That's tradition. If you don't ever want to talk to God until Sunday morning, that's religion. That's not relationship. How would you like to be married to someone and y'all only talk on Sunday morning? But y'all live in the same house all week long. But the only time you talk, well, some of us talk Wednesday nights and Sunday morning. Now, what kind of happy marriage would that be? Oh, now that just came down the pipe. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, bless God. Mm. I'm about like prophet now, <laughs> brother. <Willis. laughs> Glory to God. And God wants to be a part of your life every day. He wants to be the most important part to some Not in this house, of course. But to some believers, God is an add-on. He's only pulled out or talked to when there's trouble. As long as everything is going all right and you can handle it, you don't feel like you need God. But we need God every second of every minute of every hour, of every day, of every week, of every month, of every year. Amen. Amen. Because things will come up in our lives that we just simply can't handle. I can't, I don't even know how to go in or come out. I don't know how to get up or lay down. I don't even know how to wake myself up in the morning. I can't unless he wakes me up. So he's the source. We've got to get that revelation in our heart that God is our source, not a resource. Pull it out when you need it. Only call it when, you know, like you got some kin folk, you'll never hear from them until they need something. You a resource. But when something is a source, then it's, it's something that's active in your life all the time. God wants to be first in your life all the time. So faith comes by hearing. We have to hear the word. And then when we hear the word, we have to believe the word. And when you believe the word, you got to do the word. And the Bible's already told you there, there's an enemy that's going to contest what you're hearing. The moment revelation come to you on, on any subject, get ready for a fight. Anytime revelation Come to you on any given subject. Get ready for a fight. But you don't have to be afraid of that fight. Because you can win. Because the Bible says we've been given all power, all authority over all the works of the enemy. Amen. Hallelujah. So what he's trying to do, and I've been teaching in healing school. We've been in Mark 4. About the so and so of the word. Glory to God. Hmm. 
And the enemy cometh immediately. Come on, Mark 4. Oh, glory to God. Mark 4. Let's start with verse 13. Mark 4, verse 13. You have it? And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will you know all parables? God is saying, if you don't understand what I'm teaching here, you're not going to be able to understand anything in the Word. That's a strong statement. He said, if you don't understand this parable about the kingdom, right here in Mark 4, he said it's in Luke 8, and it's in Matthew 13 chapter. And he said, if you don't understand this, how are you going to understand any parable? Verse 14 said, the sower soweth the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, who Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their heart. Now, how was the word sown in your heart? Come on. By hearing. That's how you sow the word of God into you is by hearing the word. You hear it, you speak it, you declare it, and that way that word is sown into your heart. That's why a lot of times when you're reading the word, you need to read it out loud. Engage all of all of your senses to hear that word. It says, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony grounds, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Oh, praise God. Pastor said, this is the year 2017. All our debts are going to be paid. Woo-hoo! Yay! Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. This is the day. I claim my debt cancellation. Praise God. And you receive that word with gladness. But what you didn't know was that it wasn't going to fall on you like ripe apples off a tree. You were going to have to bring some diligence. You were going to have to correct some things. So all of a sudden, the gladness leaves. Because you thought he was just going to abracadabra. Hocus pocus. There it was. No, he's going to have to teach you the value first of a dollar. Yeah, yellow Messiah. He's going to have to teach you about tithing. Because you ain't tithing and you ain't giving offerings. That right there will keep you from getting a harvest. One thing we have to understand, God love us. Let's, let's make that abundantly clear. God loves, say this, God loves me. No matter what I do or no matter what I don't do, God loves me. But the blessings of God are conditional to me obeying the word of God. It's conditional. God has already told us about tithe and offering. Can I just flow this morning? God's already told us about the system of advancing financially, having all your needs met. To bring the tithe and offering. And some of us, some of us <clears throat> are not even consistent or haven't begun to tithe because you feel if you tithe, you're not going to have enough. You're not going to have enough. Tithing takes trust. Amen. Tithing takes trusting the word of God concerning what he said about tithing. Amen. 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 Just because you walk up here with an envelope when we do tithing offering, God knows how much money 
came into your hands this week. Ah, oh, glory. I feel a shift. <laughs> he knows how much money came into your hands this week. And he's a good mathematician. And he can count. And he knows what 10% of that is. The only reason the word of God will not work in our lives are because we're not doing it like God said to do it. Because no word of God is without power. No word of God is without power to produce, to heal, to deliver, and to set free. No word of God. Because God is not a man that he should lie. And he said, I watch over my word to perform it. I'll see to it. If you speak it, if you decree it, if you declare it, if you sow it in your heart, and if you believe it, I'll see to it that it comes to pass in your life. Because I'm no respected person. Amen. The The principles of God will work for whoever will work it. There are people not even saved. That works the principles of tithing. And it's working for them financially because it's a principle. Didn't say it was just for the kingdom. (laughs) It's a principle and it'll work. Gravity works for saved and unsaved folk alike, don't it? It's a principle. But there is extra insurance when you bring your tithing offering to God. Amen. See, the person that's not saying it's working the principle, he's going to be worried about who's trying to take it from him, what he got to do, where he can hide this. And the one that's sowing and giving according to the word and tithing, God is the one that's watching over and protecting and seeing to it. Amen. So you don't have that care or you don't have that fear or that concern. Amen. So we have to know and understand that no, I say it again, No word of God is without power. What you mean? Power to produce. Power to bring forth what it has said it will do. The word of God is the incorruptible, cannot decay. Amen. It cannot decay. (laughs) There's no chef life on it. Ah, oh, Shanda Robasai. Ain't no shelf life on this. It ain't got to be refrigerated. Ah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This is the same word that Jesus spoke when he was here, and it is just as alive. It is just as full of power as it was when he first spoke it. Now it's up to us to put it in our mouth to hear it. To believe it and to do it. There's no way you're telling God you're trusting him with your finances and you do not tithe. Just put your seatbelt on and stare straight ahead. Won't nobody know. Does nobody know? Amen. When we, when the finance committee go in there and and they do the books. Amen. They don't tell nobody no. They bet, I bet not never hear nothing come out that finance room. Amen. I've got people of integrity working in the finance room. So that's not even a concern of mine. Amen. So you get, now the Holy Ghost got me going this because, see, I, I, I got my paper, y'all. But I done told y'all I, I am not the pilot. And God knows what needs to. Because a lot of us are saying to God that things are not working. So if God says if you do this and it'll work and it's not working, and you're telling God it's not working, you're telling God he lying. Because there's no way God would give you a plan of action that had failure in it because there's no failure in him. And it will do it like God tell us to do it. Do it the way he tell us and when he tell us to do it, you'll get what the word says we'll have. 
There's no way you're going to be full of joy and all you think on is sad things. <laughs> There's no way you're going to have any joy when you worry all the time and you're full of fear. Those things don't produce joy. There's no way. It says the enemy cometh immediately to steal the word. But when you hear the word and you receive it with glad, oh, praise God. I think I'll try that. No, ain't no trying in this. It's just doing it. It's just doing it. And being faithful and consistent in your doing. Hallelujah. Because the word works, y'all. I'm a living witness. The word works. I worked for 40 years at Lance. 40 years and two months, I believe. Yeah. I worked overtime, Saturdays. 40 years, Brother Terry. That's what I say to <laughs> Glory to God. But I thank God for that. It was training. But all that I worked, all the overtime and everything, can I just tell y'all that when God brought me out to go into full-time ministry, he had to work with a sister. Oh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't move the first time he told me. Oh, no. I'm like everybody. Oh, my God. Ooh, what I'm going to do? I'm looking, I, I'm looking at the church. I'm looking at the sides of the church. Enemy told me, there ain't none of them going to stay with you. They used to pass the tail. They ain't going to stay with you. What if you don't have but two people? See, this is how the enemy does. When he comes immediately for the word, he has to use physical, natural things. Because he has no access to your spirit. Wow. So he has to use physical natural. He uses physical natural things to steal the word out of your heart. When God says you heal, then the enemy will come and attack your body physically. And what he's trying to do is take that word out of you that you have heard because he knows if that word stays in you, that word will bring to pass what he said it would bring to pass. So immediately they receive it with gladness and they have no root in themselves because I came the first Sunday and I heard that and I left out of there, glory to God. I, I couldn't go that next Sunday, and I couldn't go that next Sunday, and I couldn't go that next Sunday. Have no root in themselves. See, there has to be consistency with the things of God. In order to grow, your spirit must be fed daily. Your spirit is already like Jesus, but to get that mind transformed, to know what's already in your spirit, it's a daily thing. You eat every day, don't you? How many of you eat physically every day? You eat physically every day. Well, your spirit needs spiritual food every day because there's an enemy out there contesting the will of God every day in your life. Amen? And you know yourself, if you deplete all of your supply, when need arise, there's nothing to answer the call. Amen? So we have to do it God's way. And he says, and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. For a time. If God hadn't come through in the amount of time that I thought he should have come through, because whether we say it or not, when we pray, we kind of put a time limit on God. We may not physically say anything, but we kind of put a time limit on God. Look like something should have happened by now. I'm doing all I know to do. But sometimes there's other components to what you're speaking to come to pass. 
You, you, you pay your tithes and offerings. You believe in God for increase. Maybe that boss hard of hearing. God done told him to give you a raise. Oh. See, what we got to understand, the way that God is going to give to our bosom, he's going to cause men. He's going to cause men to give into your bosom. Good measure. Press down. Come on, y'all know it. Shake it together and run it over. But now when he speak to those men, those men have got to have ears to hear. So it's not that God didn't answer you when you first prayed. It's just that the, the resource... That he wanted to use to meet your need is disconnected. And so it may take a little bit longer. But you need to know this. He will answer my prayer. Because God's never just going to lock you into one resource. What it means is that resource he wanted to use. He had their blessing tied to it. But they didn't move. So he's got to use another resource. And that first resource said, I don't know why, you know, just look like I don't never get a blessing. Look like don't nothing. And look like something always happening for her. Well, I got Tori's because Tori didn't move. And so now Tori got an attitude with me because it looked like God working more for me than he is for her. But he talked to her first. He ain't no respect a person. God is not like that. <laughs> God is not like that. Amen. Some of us are not seeing what we want to see because we're not hearing, we're not believing, and we're not doing the word. Amen. And if we're doing it, we're doing it spasmodically. We're not doing it on a consistent basis. We're not mixing faith with what we've heard. You're polluting your seed with doubt and fear and worry, frustration and aggravation. Amen. You got to leave that seed in the ground. You can't go out there and pull that seed up every day and see what it's doing. There is a germination process that God has between the seed and the soil. And if you leave that seed in the right soil, it shall produce if you leave the seed which is the word of God in the right soil which is your heart it shall bring forth a harvest because God don't lie I don't care if it's one day two days two weeks two months a year it shall bring forth a harvest now, what you do between the time you planted the seed and time you put in the sickle for the harvest will also determine what kind of harvest you get. He said they only endure for a while. But, well, pastor said, you know, that this was going to be year of the overflow. This was going to be the year of an abundance. This was going to be the year, and it is. But I, I didn't know that first I had to start being a tither and a giver. See, we talk about tithe, but we don't talk about the offering. He said tithe and offering. If all you're doing is paying your tithe, you're still disobedient. God know what he's doing. I ain't questioning why. God know what he's doing. He said tithe and offering. Now, Pastor, you can just get up off that because I give what I can afford to give. And let me tell you something. That's all you're going to ever be able to give because <laughs> you have locked yourself into a mindset that is not the principles of God. And God is not faithful to watch over what he has not already said. Fear keep you from obeying God. That's fear. And God said, I'm not giving you a spirit of fear, 
but of love, power, and a sound mind. And it's not just where money is concerned. There are other avenues in our lives that God have dealt with us on, and we haven't done anything about them. We have not done anything about those areas. And those areas, amen, is calling a hold up, a halt <laughs> in some areas of our lives. God told you to walk in love. He's told you to walk in love. He's told you to get rid of that temp, get rid of that attitude. Amen. Walk in forgiveness. You won't forgive. Well, if I forgive, I'm letting them off. No, you're not letting them off. You're letting yourself off. Can I tell y'all something? Nobody gets away with anything. Nobody gets away with anything. Mine may have walked me down in two weeks. Yours coming. Amen. Nobody gets away with anything. We have to hear what God says about a matter. And can I tell y'all, whatever God said about the matter is what's true. true. Regardless of any past thoughts you've had on it, any ideas you've had on it, what you've heard somebody else say, if it does not line up with the word of God, it is not right. That's simply true. Anything that you do that goes against the word of God is not right. I tell them, and I've been, the Lord's been having me use this statement for quite a while. Watch what Satan's fighting you over. Watch where the fight come in. You don't ever be so sleepy as you are on Sunday morning. (laughs) Glory to God. I am so serious. So sleepy. You, you you, You never get so sleepy until you sit down and open the Bible. Uh, you, you, some of us are sleeping and some of us just bored. You're just bored when it comes to the word. That's because you don't know that the word's got life in it. The word is the only thing that can preserve you. The word of God is the only thing that can keep you, strengthen you, make a way out of no way, give you wisdom. And the word will make you rich. Word will cause you to be powerful and the word will cause you to be successful. If the word was not capable of doing all that, why the battle? Why the fight? You can have Holloquin novels up to the ceiling and you can read all day and all night. He won't bother you at all because there ain't no life in that. He wants you to live in that fantasy world. And he came riding in on this black steed, muscles rippling, hair blowing in the wind. (laughs) Now you go home and you want your husband riding in on a black steed, muscles rippling, hair blowing in the wind. If it don't do that, you done married the wrong man or the wrong woman. See, whatever you feed yourself and digest on, that's what's going to become your reality. What you hear? What you hear? When you hear the word on anything, Satan's going to come immediately to try to steal that word out of your heart so that it doesn't take root because he knows, Satan knows that if the word of God is allowed to get in your heart and to take root, harvest is guaranteed. They're not... They're not, there's not anything in this world system that's guaranteed. He's got to keep that word from taking root. He's got to keep you from meditating that word, thinking on that word, looking at that word, putting it in your eye gates and your ear gates, because he knows what the word of God will do. 
Because he know if you hear long enough, you're going to believe. If you, the only reason some people believe that the, that the United States of America is headed for destruction is because of what they heard. But they didn't hear the right source. I don't care how the Palestinians meet. And I don't care what uh, weapons they build and everything. They will never, do y'all hear me? They will never destroy Israel. Amen. Israel belongs to God. And God have already decreed, decreed that the Jews are coming home. Yeah. Amen. And Israel will once again. And God is not a man that he should lie. And if we ever get in our hearts that whatever God has said, Hear with faith. When you hear the word, mix faith with what you hear. Stop looking at your physical situation and physical circumstance to say to you whether this word is true or not or whether it's going to work or not. Because the natural world is in opposition or it's contrary to the word of God. It's going to work because God said so. <laughs> That's the word he gave us the first of the year. Because I said so. How do you know you're going to be here? Because God said so. How do you know you're going to prosper? Because God said so. How do I know I can have a happy marriage? Because God said so. And because I heard it with faith, I believed it in my heart, and I'm doing what the word tells me to do. can't just hear the word. You cannot just come to church Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, Tuesday morning after Tuesday morning, hear all this word and do nothing with it. It's like a farmer buying seed and take it home and put it in the cabinet and sit on the porch Go to the store and buy the jars and all the things you need to do to can. And you never put the seed in the ground. What kind of harvest you going to get? Why? This is what's wrong with a lot of believers. We are not planting the seed of God's word in our heart. We're not watching over it with all diligence. We're not speaking. We're not mixing it with faith. And so, therefore, we are not receiving a harvest. Because the word is guaranteed to produce. The word of God is guaranteed to produce. How much of the time, saints? That's why you can boldly decree and declare, there shall be no lack, no scarceness in my life. Because I heard the word on tithe and offering. I heard the word on giving. I believed it in my heart and I'm doing it. That locked me in. See, it matters what you hear. Go to Proverbs 1 and 5. It matters. Oh, child, it don't matter where you go to church. That's a lie. <laughs> it matters what you hear. Because everybody ain't preaching kingdom. Everybody ain't preaching the word. Child, that church too far to go. If that's where God told you to go, that's where your blessing is. It could be a church, you could step out your house, three steps and in that church, but if that's not where God planted you, there's, what's in that church may be good, but if God did not plant you there, Everybody have Proverbs 1 and 5? Okay. Proverbs 1 and 5. Okay. 
Let's read it together. Everybody's got it? Proverbs 1 and 5. Let's read it. A wise man will hear. Oh, stop right there. A wise man will hear. There's some people think they already know everything. You can't tell them nothing. But the word of God says, and, and we're all looking in our Bibles, right? Let's read it. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. Oh, it's good. The word of God is good for whatever might ail you. A wise man will hear. Anytime you sit down and read your word, ask the Holy Spirit to help you hear. Help you see what God is trying to show you. And he said, if you will hear, you'll increase in learning. See, the word is profitable. It causes you to increase. Amen. Amen. He said, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. Now, a lot of times when you see man, it's not necessarily talking about male. It's talking about mankind. Because it's talking about women and men. It's talking about mankind. Let's look down at verse 8. Let's read it together. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Now, we know that this is David tell, talking to Solomon. Uh-huh. Amen. My son, hear the instructions of your father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. The Amplified says, my son, hear the instruction of your father. Reject not, nor forsake the teaching of your mothers. See, some in, in some households, the child may listen to the daddy, but they don't pay no attention to the mama. And if the mother is wise, she has sound counsel too. A wise man will not allow his children to put him, put the mom and the dad at odds against each other. A wise father will not tell their children, you just need to hear, hear me. No matter what your mama say. That's not a wise man. Amen. It takes both parents. It takes both parents to raise that child. When I was reading this and studying this and the Lord, you know, the Lord would take you on little side trails and all this. And he was talking about, he was showing me how when he created Adam and, and the male and the female was in Adam. And when he wanted Adam to have a helpmate, he went in in him and pulled out that soft side, which is war man. He pulled her out to be a helpmate to him. To compliment him. Amen. Amen. And the Lord was telling me this is why. When he created marriage. He created it male and female. Because a child needs both. And no matter what society say. No matter what this world system say. Two men can't give a child what they need. He said they may have all the money and can put the best clothes, the best house, the best school. But that child will be missing something because you can't improve on what God said is right. If God says that child needs the male and the female components to come together to nurture that child and bring that child up, God has not changed from his original plan. No two women can give a child what they need to grow up the way God has designed for them to grow up. The softness is in the woman. Mm -hmm. 
So if you got two soft sides, where is the authority of the male figure? I love what uh, Minister Kevon said to uh, Laurel yesterday. He said, when your father died, I stepped in and I became your father. So you would have a male presence in your life. See, one thing we got to understand, the word of God is always right. You can't change it. You can't improve on it. Because it's already right. And I believe with all my heart, if we would start standing up and telling all of our young people about the plan of God, the covenant of God, how marriage, raising children, we would stop having so many unwed mothers because you are doing your child a disservice. And then you got all this mama, daddy drama. And because he ain't treating you like you're supposed to, you won't let him see his child. Or you won't let her see her child. But you're just selfish. You're not thinking about the baby. You're not thinking about what that child needs. That's why God said when we hear the word, you have to believe what God has said. The way he's designed it is what's right. And then we got to do. Got to do. We're we're still teaching. And let me know, care how much time. We're still teaching. And it's nothing wrong with about day in the line, then and the three Hebrew boys. Nothing wrong with that. But we need some app, we need some up to date applications to the word of where we are now. now. Yeah. Do you know people don't consider life anything now? Yeah. Yeah. That's why they'll snuff you out like that. Yeah. Because they've lost the value and the worth of a life. What you hear. You can't feed yourself world all week. And then come in on Sunday and think you're going to hear from God. <laughs> Have you ever been on your, on your cell phone and you're driving? And you go through a certain area and your call drop? Huh? And you feed yourself all week on the word. And you come in on Sunday morning. And he talking. But you just dropped your call. Because you're in an area you're unfamiliar with. You can't eat a steady diet of candy, cookies, and ice cream all week long. And expect for your teeth not to decay. Expect for your bones to be strong. You got to feed your body, physical body, what it needs to maintain health. As well as you got to feed your spirit, man, what it needs. Amen. To be spiritually healthy. Glory to God. Your spirit needs to eat. So it can take care of anything that comes up in your life. It can tell when your soul want to run off your mind, your will and emotion want to run off. Your spirit said, no, no, no. That's the way we used to act before I was in control. I'm in control now. Glory to God. No weapon formed against us is going to prosper. Amen. We're going to rejoice. And again, I say we're going to rejoice. Let's go to Proverbs 4 and 1. We got to hear y'all. It's time, it's time we come to hear what thus said the Lord and then believe what he said and then put action to what he said. Become a doer of what he said. Well, I know, I know he said that, but ain't no but. Ain't no but. God is always right. Say that. God is always right. <laughs> always. Whether we believe it, whether we understand it, God is always right. That's the bottom line. Ain't no negotiating, ain't no debating. He's always right. 
And his ways, amen, will lead to life and health and strength. Amen. Proverbs 4 and 1. Everybody have it? Let's read it together. Hear ye children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake you not my law. The Amplified says, hear my sons the instructions of a father and pay attention in order to gain and to know intelligent discernment, comprehension, and interpretation of spiritual matters. For I give you good doctrine, what is to be received. Do not forsake my teaching. Once you hear the word of God on on a matter, don't forsake it. Don't try to change it to suit you. God never have to change. We're the ones that have to change. And when you have a revelation of how much God loves you, that the thoughts and plans he has for you are good, then it's easier to obey the word of God. It's easy to obey the word of God if you know you got that revelation of God's love on the inside of you. I keep my granddaughters and the little one. Sometimes I have to spank her little legs. Very seldom. But anywho... She knows I love her. And if I get the car keys, where we going, Grandma? Or whatever I do, it's okay with her. You know why? Because she and I have history together. We spend a lot of time together. She knows me by my past actions. And the only way you're going to ever be able to follow God into what he's called you to do, into what he's asking you to do, you're going to have to develop a relationship. You're going to have to spend time with him. You're going to have to know him, not what he does. You know him. No, he's a good father. He's a loving father. He's kind. He's merciful. He's faithful. He's just. He has no respect of person. There's no prejudice in him. There's no racism in him. He's good to all. And when you get that understanding, God, I know you're asking me to do this. And in and of myself, I don't believe I can do that. But you said I can. So I'm going to step out in faith on what I heard. I'm going to believe it in my heart. And I'm just going to do it. That's the only way you're going to be able to hear, believe, and do. You're going to have to trust the one that told you. Do you trust God? Now, Pastor, that you talking to uh, you talking to say people. Do you trust God? I know who I'm talking to. Do you trust God? Of course, I do. Really? God said, "If you love me." You'll do what? You'll keep my commandment. If you trust me, you'll do what I say, even if you don't see, even if it makes no sense. Because I trust you. I trust what you said. Proverbs 4, look down at verse 10. Proverbs is a book of wisdom. Proverbs 4 and 10. We're talking about hearing, believing, and doing. Everybody have it? Let's read it together. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. Wow. The years. Hear, O my son, and receive. Hear and believe. My sayings. Follow my instructions, and the years of your life shall be many. Because the word will lead you in a plain and even path. Amen. 
<laughs> Your words are life and medicine to all my flesh. Drop down to, to 20. Same chapter. Verse 20. Let's read it. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. My son, attend. Hear. Listen. Pay close attention to what I'm telling you. To what I'm saying to you. Let them Come on. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. For they are life unto those that find them and hell to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. He said, my son, hear my words. Listen to my instructions on how to do. Incline means to lean in. Listen closely. Pay strict attention to what I'm saying. Keep them. Keep what? My words. What I've said to you. Instead of having that bill out and looking at it over and over and over, wondering how you're going to make it, get the word out. And look at that over and over and over. Amen? That's what's going to cause, cause faith cometh by hearing. And hearing. So if you need faith to be healed, faith to pay your bills, faith to do what you need to be hearing what? It's so simple, but we make it so hard. But what we'll do is we get the problem. Yeah, glory. Hey, And we give strict attention to the problem. We lean in, we incline, we keep the problem before our eyes. And when you keep the problem before your eyes, what's going to be magnified is the problem. And that problem is going to tell you that bills have get a voice. You ain't going to be able to pay me. <laughs> ain't no way you're going to be able to make that mortgage payment this month. Oh, y'all going to be eaten by candlelight. Oh, this ain't going to happen. See, but God has already said, I have told you how to do this. I told you to attend to what? My words. Listen to what I said about the situation. Keep that before your eyes. Keep my word before your eyes. Tell yourself what I said in my word concerning this situation. You don't read anywhere where God said every weapon formed against you is going to prosper. He said no weapon. So that's what you need to put before your eyes. And the Bible says in James 1, he said, If any man like wisdom, let him ask of God. And God gives it liberally. Now, God, here's this situation. Some of us need to ask God to forgive us because we done messed up. No condemnation with that. Lord, I asked you for the money to pay so-and-so. And and you gave me the money. But I didn't do what I should have done with the money. Or, Lord, I asked you for the payment. But instead of putting the whole thing on the bill like I was supposed to, I just put half. How y'all think I know I live in this real world? Come on, give me a break. I ain't telling you I'm like I'm from Mars somewhere. Stuff just happened for me just because it happened. No. (laughs) And now, because you gave me the money and I didn't do 
what I should have done with it. Not only is that not paid, So, Lord, I need you to give me wisdom. See, the only reason, can I, can I just step over here and boldly say the only reason you didn't obey because you didn't think God was going to come through again. But if he did that, he'll do this. If we keep looking at what's left, we'll never obey God. If we keep looking at what's going to be left after I do what God tell me to do, it ain't going to be enough. That's what Satan's saying to you. But that seed is what's going to bring you more than enough. Your obedience to do what God told you to do, it takes trust. It takes trust. That's why he said, pay attention to my words. Listen to my instructions. Glory to God. See, God knows how to rescue those that belong to him. God knows how to get you out of a bad place. I think I didn't finish my story. I was telling y'all after I worked at last for 40 years, the Holy Spirit just bore it back. But ever since God bore me out, he has taken better care of me than all my 40 years at last. He has given more to me and taken care of me better than I ever could have taken care of myself. And I am so thankful. So thankful. Look at Proverbs 19 and 20. Can you take a little bit more? Proverbs 19 and 20. It is important how we hear, y'all. It's important what we hear. It's important what you receive. It's important what thoughts you allow to run through your mind. If somebody tell you something, you're going to have to do something with what you done heard now. (laughs) I am so serious. You're going to have to do something with it. I'm listening to a series by uh, Pastor George Pearson. It's called Persecution. Oh, it is so good. The church act like just something new. And the Bible says, those that live godly will suffer persecution. He didn't say we had to like it. (laughs) But he said for those that will live godly, you will suffer persecution. Folk going to talk about you. Okay? That's everybody in this room, me included. Folk going to talk about you. They're going to make fun of you. They're going to laugh at you. You got to decide what kind of effect you let that have on you. Don't let folk come and tell you so-and-so said this about you. Then now, now you got the way to doing something with what they told you. Don't tell them I told you. Now every time you see that person, you're feeling some kind of way. They can't understand why last Sunday you hugged them and it was all nice. And this Sunday, you went three seats over just so you didn't have to pass them. That's because somebody put something in their ear. Now it's got them feeling some kind of way. That's what Satan do. He'll slip in and so tear. You have to do something with it. The Bible told you what to do with it. What did the Bible tell us to do with it? Cast down every thought and every imagination that would exalt itself against what? See, the word done already, we done heard what the word said to do. He said to cast it down. No, we're going to sit and we're going to think about it. Meditate. That ain't what the Bible told He told you to meditate the word. See, we meditate on the wrong thing. We cast down the wrong thing. We cast down what the word said. Well, I tell you one thing, child. You, I can't wait till I see her again. Woo, child, please. Mm -mm. See, we're doing the wrong thing. He said to cast down every thought, 
every imagination that would exalt itself or try to take dominion over the word in your life. You got to cast it down. I'm tired of casting down. We'll keep casting until the stake down. You can't get tired. He said, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season. That's why he said for us to endure hardness like a good soldier. Soldier, don't go in the army today and serve two days and then walk out tomorrow and tell them I'm going to the house. Oh, no, you don't. You got to finish out whatever is all that. You can't just go home. I don't care how the bullets are flying. I don't care how that... That whoever your drill sergeant hollering at you and calling you some of everything, you can't just say, well, he hurt my feelings, and I ain't coming back. You, you, I know what's going to happen to you. So somehow we think we're in some kind of little patty cake, some little pansy wall. This thing is death and life. That's why God is putting the word of God in us to fortify us and to build us up. Amen. For any attack that the enemy brings, we are well equipped to handle it in the name of Jesus. You fortify yourself with the word of God. Fill yourself up with the knowledge and the revelation of who God says you are, that he's on your side. Then you are able to confront and victoriously control any situation that come up in your life. It matters what you hear. You can't go to a church and they tell you, God put sickness on you. The devil is a lie. God put sickness on Jesus. So he would not have to put sickness on you. Tell me it don't matter where you go to church. It don't matter what you hear. Proverbs 19 and 20. I'm real passionate about the word, y'all. The enemy, the enemy had me on this thumb, Brother Terry, for so many years. I lived in fear. I lived in frustration. I had no self-worth, no self-esteem. I didn't even know who I was. And I lived from crisis to crisis. But thanks be unto God. One day he opened my eyes, and they're still being opened even the more. And I began not only to hear the word, Sister Debbie, I began to receive and believe what I heard. Then I began to do what the word said to do. And I'm a free woman today, and whom the Son has set free is free indeed. And I intend to stay free because I know what to do to stay free. Keep myself full of the word of God. Stay around the people of God. Love the things of God. Treat people right. Amen. I know what to do. Proverbs 19 and 20 says, read with me. Hear counsel. And receive instructions that thou mayest be wise in the latter end. Wow. The Amplified says, hear counsel. Receive instruction and accept correction that you may be wise in the time to come. There's not a one of us that cannot benefit from sound counsel. And I do say sound counsel. There's not a one of us that will not have to be corrected at some point in our lives. That don't make you stupid. That don't make something wrong with you any more than you're telling your child, don't put your feet up on the table. (laughs) Eat with your fork. You're correcting. And so God says those he loves, he chastises or he corrects or child trains. You know why God does this? Because he wants to present you to the world. Mm. As parents, when you go out with your children and somebody come to the table and say, you know what, we've been watching y'all. You have some of the most well-behaved well-mannered children. Don't that make you feel good? Don't that just make you feel good? Well, what do you think daddy got 
feels like when somebody's praying and say, God, you know, I just want to thank you so much for minister. Jawas. I thank you, God, that she's shown me love and she's shown me kindness. God said, that's my girl. That's my girl. She's representing the kingdom. She's representing the kingdom or anyone in this place. When you do something good and somebody go to the father and say, Father, thank you for something, he said, that's mine. Even when you, he don't disown you even when you don't do it. But he's, 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 it makes his heart glad. It makes his heart glad when you represent the kingdom. Sound counsel. Any person that think they cannot be counseled by anyone is a fool. Including your apostle. There'll be times in my life, Holy Spirit will, he corrects me all the time, and I love it, because left to myself, I'd be a pure mess. You hear me? Let's swiftly go to James 1 and 19. We're just about to wrap this up. How many of you appreciate the word? I call... Overseer a little bit earlier. I don't know. I don't. I, I, I do know why the enemy is, is always trying to fight me. <laughs> I do know. But he need to know there's not a battle he's going to engage me in that I'm not going to win. Amen. And I said this this morning. I said, I may be a little late, but I'm coming. Amen. Told Sister Sharon. I said, I might be a little late, but I'm coming. See, you can determine the end of a thing. I could have said, child, whoo, girl, y'all carry on. I'll see y'all next time. I have an assignment. God give me everything I need to carry out my assignment in this earth, including rebuttal against the attacks of the enemy. <laughs> Evidently, he don't know who I am. He don't know how God wars on my behalf. He don't know how God fights for me. He keep wanting to get cut, just let him keep on coming. I'm going to keep on cutting him, brother Will. I'm going to keep on cutting him, brother. Because I know who I belong to. I know who I belong to. I know who's on my side. I know who's got my back. James 1 and 19. You got it? See, when something happens, go ahead and declare the end from the beginning. and Watch God make it work out for your good. You got James 1 and 19? Let's read it together. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. Underline that or highlight if it's not in your Bible. Let every man. Let the past know. He said, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Why? For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Amplified says, Understand this, my beloved brethren. Let every man be quick to hear, a ready listener, slow to speak, slow to take offense, and to get angry. For man's anger does not promote 
the righteousness of God, what he wishes and requires of us. Be swift to hear what God says about the matter. We're swift to hear what somebody else says. Let's be swift. Let's be quick to hear what the word says. And then once you hear that word, be quick to believe it. Tell God, I don't need any physical manifestations to validate your word. The fact that you are not a man that you should lie, the fact that it's in your word and you said it, that's enough for me. Now give me the strength to do what you put in my heart. Hearing, believing, and doing. Well, did you receive this morning? I'm going to stop right there. Unless God changes it, we'll we'll delve into this some more on next Sunday. It's important what you hear. It's important how you hear. Because the Bible says what measure of thought and study you give to what you've heard is the measure that's going to be measured back to you. I like to go to the word explosion in Columbia. Every year when it comes. It'll be here this year, September 21st through 23rd. I already got overseer. Get in my room. Because God bringing Kenneth Copeland. He bringing George Pearson. He bringing Gloria Copeland. He bringing Bill Winston. Bringing Creflo Dollar. These are men with reputable ministry. I can grow and learn. When I go, I take my Bible, my pad, and my pen. Because I know God is going to say some stuff that's going to help a sister. Sister Ben, I looked at world overcomers. And you might have to talk. Because that's in August. It's going to be at world overcomers with Pastor Riley. He got some good speakers come. See, the thing is, I now know and understand beyond a shadow of a doubt that the more of the word of God I get in me, the more successful, the more healed I stay, the more full of joy I stay. Amen. Glory to God. And if God prepare a table, glory to God. Woo!